Hello, this is Anne de Geest, and it's February 20th, 2023. Should you still worry about COVID reinfection? Let's kind of look about some of the latest research on long COVID and the XBB 1.5. Uh, first, on the good news, uh, XBB 1.5 did not drive a winter hospitalization surge like we've seen in prior years. So. Uh, although it's significantly more infectious than the other variants there, it doesn't seem to have as much severity. Good news also is Paxlovid is effective uh, against that variant during acute infection and also continue to decrease the risk of long COVID. And we're going to talk about a hybrid immunity. Uh, it is protecting people against severe reinfection case for up to 10 months. The bad news, only 15% of Americans got the bivalent vaccine. And uh, you really should get it if you haven't got it after you've listened to this update because there's some significant risk in not maximizing your autoimmune protection. Uh, recent data has shown that COVID impacts the heart uh, of people after an infection with significantly higher cardiac risk for up to 12 months. And also majority of Americans have been infected at least once. Now, the ugly news is that we're still getting over 3,000 deaths per week from COVID, around 453 per day on, on the average. Uh, long COVID is affecting 65 million people worldwide, and it's estimated 16 million in the U.S., with 2 to 4 million who are not able to go back to work. And we're going to do a deep dive on the latest research on long COVID. There's been a lot of recent news, and it's confirming that it's a, it is a neuroimmune disorder. So let's take a deep dive. Uh, a report from Harvard and Yale shows that it's estimated that 94% of Americans have had COVID at least once. It seems to be a little bit optimistic there, but they also estimate that around 97% of Americans have some immunological protection via the virus uh, or the vaccine. Uh, there's been several published data there that Dr. Eric Topola has summarized that shows that probably the infection rate is uh, around... 50 to 94%. So I'm just saying the majority of Americans got long with COVID. So Kraken is the new variant called XBB 1.5. It's not 80% of the American cases there. It's the most infectious uh, variant so far. But the good news is that uh, it doesn't seem to be as severe. And so you can see the number of cases reported seems low, but of course we have no idea since most of the analysis and the tests are not being done at home and not reported. More importantly, the hospitalization is what matters. And you can see that we had a tiny surge during the winter, but nothing compared to what we had in 2021 and 2022. So that's the, that's the great news. Now, we still have people dying from COVID. You know, it, this thing is not going away, unfortunately, there. And so right now, as I mentioned, it's around uh, four, 453 seven-day average per day. So it's not insignificant. So the only way we know what's going on is to look at wastewater. And you can see uh, that uh, the wastewater has some hot spot in the Midwest and the Northeast. And whatever lab data uh, is being done for when people do a PCR, uh, it shows 10%. But as again, uh, that data is not as reliable since most of the tests are being done at home. So wastewater is another way to look at the increase over time. And you can see in orange and in red at the area there was increased by 60 to 100%. So these are areas there where you have contamination and infection in the community. So for example, in Northern California, I look at the Santa Clara County and you can see that we had a bit of a surge in January that we had in prior year in both uh, Palo Alto, San Jose and Sunnyvale, for example. Vaccination, only 15.8% of the population that's eligible has taken the, the bivalent vaccine. You really should take it because the big issue is, is developing long COVID. Uh, the good news is 40% of people with the year of 65 uh, got the bivalent. It should be much higher than that. But the bad news is a lot of the young people uh, have not got themselves the bivalent vaccine. And these are the ones, unfortunately, that are at high risk of developing long COVID. So... Uh, what is the protection do you get if you have been infected? So right now, most people have some type of hybrid immunity, which is a combination of antibodies from the infection and antibody from the vaccine. And so a meta study uh, analyzing 65 studies done by the Lancet shows that you have 90% effectiveness against severe diseases if you have hybrid immunity for up to 10 months. 
So let me be very clear. We still can get reinfected, you know, I think pretty much given up protection against infection. The more important part is protection against severe diseases and, of course, long COVID. So uh, as you would expect, the protection is much stronger for the earlier variant, which is the alpha and the delta, and lower for the Omicron, which is only 36% disease against reinfection. So you still at high risk of getting reinfected. The more important part is to get enough antibodies to make sure you don't have a severe case. And you can see that protection there, a uh, few people who have had the BA2 uh, uh, um, infection in the past, you know, drop very quickly there. You can see we have a 50% drop of the protection after roughly three to four months, and then it kind of stabilized uh, at a lower rate, up to 10 months. So this is some of the bad news that has come up there. Several studies have shown that uh, an infection of COVID can create damage to the heart. And, and that's even for people who have had mild cases of COVID, especially for people between 25 to 44 years old. There was a huge surge of heart attack during the pandemic. And so what we are learning is that there is called cardiac myopathy, which is inflammation of the heart. And somehow COVID seems to basically create an oxidative stress and inflammation a response there that creates damage to the heart. That could be shown by chest pain and tachycardia, which is arrhythmia of the heart. And, uh, and very elevated heart rate. And so what we've shown in the mice is that there's an increase in fibrosis and dilation of the fibers, which can lead to the death of some of the heart cells. So it is a big issue there. So if you have any type of symptoms with your heart after you've had a COVID infection in the last prior months, you really, uh, prior months, you should really make sure you see somebody. You could do an echo ultrasound and quickly assess if there's any type of cardiac inflammation, cardiac myopathy. To give you an idea about the risk, they did a study at the Veteran Administration on 153,000 patients there who had COVID against two control groups of 5 million each. And they look at the one-year burden, and they show an overall increase of at least 2x for stroke, heart attack, arrhythmias, um, basically heart failures, pulmonary embolies, long list of bad problems there. And in particular, it was much more severe as you would expect for people in the ICU and who were hospitalized. The ICU, it's stunning, is 5 to 20x hazard ratio, which means a multiple of one, uh, which is the normal baseline is one for the normal population for that age group there. And then you have a significantly high 5 to 20 times higher risk. Even for people who are in the green, which are the non-hospitalized mild cases there, we did see an increase, which I think was a surprise to a lot of people there that uh, a lot of people with mild cases end up developing some cardiac complications. In addition to that, COVID during the acute phase of the infection is also um, unfortunately damaging the brain. Uh, they did the uh, 54 postmodern frontal cortex uh, sample. Uh, and what they find out is that people who had COVID-19 had a significantly worse brain uh, status than people who were in the control group. And what they show is a faster cognitive decline. Uh, for that population there. So as they said uh, in the article there, severe COVID is equivalent to becoming a 71-year-old uh, age brain. Uh, let's talk about long COVID. Now I just uh, initially talked about people who have had an acute infection and what some of the consequences afterwards independent of long COVID. Unfortunately, around 10 to 20% of people uh, can develop long COVID even if you're fully vaccinated with bivalent and everything, you still have probably a 5 to 10% chance. So it is kind of the really big problem we have to deal with. It's no longer mortality, but really developing long COVID, which could affect the rest of your life. It is pretty clear there's four reasons, you know, people are confirming more and more. One is that the virus stays in your body and has been measured uh, doing some pathology after uh, autopsies that people can have it for as long as 270 days after the infection there, and it's in every organ of your body, your brain, your, your core organs there, the spinal cord, you know, it, it's really incredible. In addition to that, there's a possibility that the immune system uh, basically gets compromised and you develop an autoimmune disorders. The third aspect is that you may have a latent virus that was controlled by the immune system, but when the immune system dropped down during the active part of the infection there, you may have basically trigger that virus to be activated. In addition to that, we know that people develop microclots and other type of damage to the organ. So it basically comes up with a long list of symptoms. And as we know, uh, in the prior videos, there's over 100 type of system that people can do, uh, symptoms that people can develop. Let's do a deep dive uh, on some of them. It's been estimated by a good article 
uh, in stat and in nature that 65 million of people around the world have probably developed long COVID and at least 16 million in the U.S. and 2 to 4 million are unable to go back to work. Um, when we have done brain aut autopsies there, what they find out is that this virus is all throughout the body and it's widespread throughout the brain in the, and damage the cell lining and create exaggerate, exaggerated clotting. As a result of that, what we are now discovering is that in the white matters, which is uh, in the brain there, yeah, it's like the bridges between the white matters have been blown up and the cerebral cortex and the hippocampus connections are basically being damaged there. What that means is that when we do a PET scanner, is that there is, we can see impaired cellular metabolism in the frontal lobe up to six months after the acute infection. In the MRI, we see there's loss of actual brain tissue. So this thing is like a train wreck uh, um, uh, inside the brain. Let's, let's understand a little bit better what's going on. The brain is really atrophying uh, because of long COVID. And we know that uh, the virus gets into the nose or the mouth and then somehow makes its way uh, through the nasal pathway into the brain. When it gets into the brain, what we're discovering is that it's leaking and it's creating this inflammation response. And what we seem to identify is that the hippocampus, which is a really big important part for memory, is also being impacted as well as the frontal lobe. And the reason is that the lining of the cells, you know, in the veins there, in the arteries there are leaking and you can see the body's responding to that uh, uh, to create what's called macrophage. And macrophage is like blanket bombing. I mean, instead of the very targeted missiles that you may have uh, in our immune system there, this is kind of a macrophage out there attacking what they think is an invasion or something that should happen. And one of the side effects of that is that it can infect the astrocyte. The astrocyte is the neural support of the cells. And as a result of that, slowly kill the neurons. So what we are discovering is this constant viral uh, virus reservoir is continuously creating that chronic uh, inflammation there and continuously activating this macrophage or continuously having this cascade that unfortunately are damaging the neurons. So in the brain, uh, when we look at some of the imaging here, you can see in yellow and in red the area of the brain that gets damaged. And uh, as we're doing a study of, that pop of these patients there, and you can see at the bottom is the age of the patient there, and this is a kind of a trail that has, it's an instrument that's been validated for cognitive losses, you can really see that the patients there are significantly less responsive for the, versus the age group. So in orange is the long COVID cases, and in uh, light blue there is the control group. And, and you can see a significant loss in cognition. The other issue that's happening with long COVID is what's called POTS. POTS is a symptom there where if you're sitting and you stand up, for example, your heart rate suddenly shoots up uh, uh, and increases its heart rate by 30 beats. And, uh, and it is uh, a disease of the auto, uh, um, it's the system there that self-regulate your heart rate, your blood pressure. And it's called postural orthostatic tachy tachycardia syndrome there. So your heart it starts racing. Uh, it is linked to brain fog, it is linked to chest pain, it's linked to palpitation, shortness of breath, and gastrointestinal problem there. So it is one of the key determinants that identify people who have developed long COVID. The way it's being treated right now is people use beta blockers, Adderall, uh, which is for attention deficit, people with progressive uh, physical therapy. It's really important that you see a specialist in long COVID. If you do physical therapy and exercise too quickly and too fast, you're going to do yourself more harm than good. It's very important to get somebody who can progressively uh, get you for a higher exercise level there. It's also important to reset your recovery expectation. It could take months, uh, if not years, to recover. Uh, help get better sleep, happy to help your immune system fight the virus that in, your, in your system there. Remember, when your tests say there is no virus in your nose, that doesn't mean there is no virus in the rest of your body. It is pretty clear that after the, the virus is no longer in the nose, it's still everywhere for every organ in the body. So you really have to help your immune system clear the virus. And I think it's probably going to take a couple of months. So what is happening with the microvasculature? What we're discovering is there that these patients who have long COVID have lower capacity 
uh, reduce capillaries. So it's the ability of, of bringing blood to the muscles and the tissues. And that's due to this immune, immune cells dysregulation I just explained there. So when they have done in-depth analysis of the skeleton and the muscles in the skeleton, what they're discovering is that those patients have long COVID, a fewer capillaries, and, and they have also more of the CD169 and macrophage. So they have a lower ability of bringing blood to the muscles. And that's probably one of the reasons why they're having this exercise dependent fatigue and muscle pain. They are really not able to bring enough nutrients for the for normal blood distribution. And you can see some of the uh, signature here where you can see the patient with long COVID uh, have really um, an impact on their bones and the skeleton muscles. Plus, as I mentioned, it can be global uh, across the whole body for uh, hypovolemia and hypotensions and fatigue, but it can also be localized. And, and the localized could be in, in, uh, in just in the migraine and connective brain fog or venous pulling or you know, uh, uh, heat and cold intolerance there. So it's really important there that you do see a specialist uh, to really uh, able to identify how long COVID is starting to affect your body. And remember, a lot of people only start developing these symptoms three to four months after the acute infection. So a very interesting study from Nature showed that although there's hundreds of different symptoms which can be overwhelming for long COVID, there's really four big categories that seems to emerge. There's four sub-phenotypes. Uh, the the uh, cardiac is around 33%, respiratory is around 33%, musculoskeletal and nervous system is 23 and digestive. So let me go over some of them. You can see in the cardiac, uh, uh, a really problem there with fluid and electrical disorders, pneumonia, uh, acute renal failure is a problem there. So people end up on some type of kidney uh, damage. Uh, and of course, the abnormal heart rate and the chest pain and the heart failures, which is kind of the key determinant of that category there. In the subphenotype 2, these people have a lot of problem uh, with breathing, the chest pain, asthma, respiratory issues there, a headache. Uh, and, and so uh, it, it, it's a different profile. The third one is, is people having a lot of problem with musculoskeleton. So they're having literally musculoskeletal related pain. Osteoarthritis is increased, tendon, uh, and then of course some skin damage. And then the fourth category, which is around 10%, is all intestinal gastrointestinal disorder and abdominal pain. So it's really important if you know anybody who started developing these symptoms that they somehow find their way to a long COVID center there so that they get the right specialist to help them develop a personalized plan. So how do we live with COVID? Well, first be aware. Uh, it's there. It's probably going to be there for a long time. So wear an N95 uh, when uh, you're indoor in a crowded area with poor ventilation. The CDC is still validating that if you put an N95 or K95 in this risky environment there, you can decrease by 83% the, ch the chance of being uh, infected. Remember, surgical mask is not as effective as only 66%. Plus masks are only decreasing your odds by 56%. Check your local wastewater surveillance for upcoming search. You know, typically it's, it can be predictive of an increase in, in, the, uh, in the community infection rates uh, by up two to four weeks. Stay current on vaccination. Please get the bivalent vaccine. Uh, you know, you may still get infected, but you want to avoid the risk of severe and more importantly, the risk of long COVID. If you do get reinfected, uh, try to get Paxlovid. Uh, if you can get access to it, it, it has a very, very successful over 80% uh, uh, impact on decreasing the risk of a hospitalization in severe, in severe cases and as a result of that long COVID. If you do get infected, uh, avoid heavy exertion while infected. The worst thing you can do, especially for young people, is to burn and through exercise and hope that you can burn like the way some people do for the flu. That will basically decrease the immune system and get the viral reservoir to explode and have the higher chance of developing long COVID over time because your body wasn't able to flush it out. If you do get uh, against an infection, even if it's mild, assume four to eight weeks to help your immune system to get rid of these viruses that's sitting inside your organ there. Avoid strenuous cardiac exercise you know, for that period of time and help your immune system to flush the virus out. Eat well, sleep well, you know, basically be very gentle with yourself there. It's very important during that one or two months period after the acute infection that you do everything you can to help your immune system flush the virus that's inside your body. 
If you do have a, a flu type of symptom there with mucus, uh, watch out for the mucus changing colors because that may means you may have developed some type of bacterial co-infection there like in the lungs. So I hope you stay healthy. Uh, I wish you a fantastic spring. Uh, I, this is just information for, to help you make better decisions based on the science being published. Uh, if you like my effort there, please post on your social channels. Please help spread the word. Give me a thumbs up and stay healthy.